Hello everyone, it's Zaid from Zed Security, and in this lecture, we're going to talk about keyloggers. A keylogger is a program that runs in the background of the target computer and basically records all key strikes that the target person enters on their computer. So it doesn't matter where they use the keyboard, whether they use it to log into a website, whether they use it in a chat, whether they use it to write stuff in a Word document. This program will literally just record every key strike the person types on their keyboard and then send it to you to your email to analyze. Now, since this is not a program in course, we're going to use a program called Zlogger to generate the keyloggers for us. I've actually made this program myself. If you want to learn how to program your own keylogger, then have a look on my Python course. In that course, you'll learn Python programming from scratch by writing hacking programs. And one of the programs that you'll actually build in that course is Zlogger. Now, Zlogger is not installed in Kali. So you'll have to first download it from this Git repo and install it. Check out the description for detailed information on how to download and install Zlogger on Kali Linux. Once installed, you'll need to navigate to the location where you installed it. Now, if you follow the instructions in the description, you'll have it installed in opt Zlogger. So I'm gonna do cd, opt z logger. Now, if we do ls, we'll see all the files in this directory, and the main file for the program is zlogger.py. Now, since this is a Python program, we have to type Python followed by the program name in order to run it. And because this is the first time that we run this program, it's a really good idea to type dash dash help to see how we can use this program and all the arguments that we can set for it. So I'm gonna hit enter, and as you can see, I'll get a very helpful message showing me how to use this program. So we can see, first of all, the usage is gonna be Python, followed by the program name, followed by the options. So let's do the easy bit first, and we're just gonna do Python, followed by the program name. And then let's look at the options one by one, and set their values. So we can see the first argument is the help argument, which we actually used, and the description for this is it'll literally show us this message right here. The next argument that we can use is the interval, and this takes a value, and the description tells us that this is the time between reports in seconds. So if we set this to 60, we're gonna get a report every 60 seconds, if you set it for 3,600 seconds, which is an hour, then you're gonna get a report every hour and so on. Now, because we're only testing, I'm gonna set this to a small number, so I'm gonna set it to 60. So I'm gonna do dash i 60, so that the program will send me a report every minute, every 60 seconds. Now, this won't be useful in a real life scenario because you're gonna get a lot of reports but because we're only testing, it's fine because I actually don't want to wait for a long time before I can see the results. The next two arguments in here specify the target operating system. So if my target runs a Windows operating system, we're gonna use dash W or dash dash Windows. If it uses Linux, then we're gonna do dash L or dash dash Linux. This will allow Zlogger to know how to compile the keylogger so that it runs on the target operating system. So for now, we're targeting Windows, so I'm gonna do dash W, and then we're gonna go to the required arguments here, and as you can see, the first one is dash E, or dash dash email, and this takes a value of the email. And I think this is self-explanatory, Basically, this is the email that the program will send the reports to. So I'm gonna do dash E and put my email, which is johnwick70 at gmail.com. And the next argument, you probably guessed it by now, it's the password and it's the password for this email so that the program can log in and send emails to myself 
of the reports. So the password is going to be abc12, abc12. So this is my actual password for this email account. Finally, and the last argument is the dash o argument, which allows us to specify the name of the file that will be generated by the keylogger. So I'm gonna do dash o and I'm gonna call this just keylogger. So very, very simple command. All we did is we're doing Python followed by the program name, which is zlogger.py because this is a Python program. We're giving it the interval. So we're gonna re receive reports every 60 seconds. We're using dash W to generate a keylogger for Windows. We're given the email after the dash argument. This is the email that I'm gonna receive the reports on. I'm given the password for this email. And finally, we're just telling the program to name the file that it's going to generate keylogger. So I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, it's telling me that the exe has been generated successfully. And it's also giving us a very important note. It's telling us that we need to make sure that less secure applications are enabled on the Gmail account that we used. So to make sure that these are enabled, you wanna to go to this URL. So I'm just gonna copy it and I'm gonna open it in my browser. Now it's gonna ask you to log in when you go to it for the first time, but in my case, I've already logged in. And as you can see, allow less secure applications is set to on. This is very important. If it's set to off, then my keylogger will not be able to use this Gmail account to send emails and you will never receive reports. So once this is enabled, we're good to go. And the file that this program generated is stored in a directory called dist. So let me show you. If I just open my file manager here and go to optz logger, you'll see we have a new directory called dist and inside it we have the file which is called keylogger.exe. This is the file that will register the keystrikes once executed on the target computer. So in a real life scenario, you'd want to social engineer your target and use a smart method to deliver this file and get your target to execute it. And I cover a lot of these methods in my social engineering course. But for now, since we're just testing, I'm literally going to upload it and download it from my target Windows machine. So this is my target Windows machine. As you can see, I've already downloaded the keylogger. And keep in mind, you need to turn off your antivirus program. Again, since we're just testing right now, we want to minimize the things that might stop the keylogger from working. And later on in the course, I'm going to teach you how to bypass antivirus programs. So I'm going to double click it and run it. And again, I know this looks suspicious. Don't worry about that. We're going to talk about delivery methods later on. And we'll talk about how to make this look and function just like any other file type, like an image or a PDF. So if you're interested in learning all of this, and learning how to bypass antivirus programs, then check out my social engineering course. Click on the card on the top right or use the links in the description to get a special discount on this course. So for now the keylogger is working and it should be running in the background. Now before I do anything, if I go to the Kali machine, you'll see that I already got a report from my keylogger and if we go in, you can see we have some basic information about the target. So we can see that it's running Windows 10. We can see the computer name is Zaid's PC and we can see the user is called Zaid. Now in the logs, all we're seeing is keylogger started because the user didn't really type anything using their keyboard. So let's go back here and let's go to Facebook for example. And let's log in. So let's put my username as Zaid, Zaid, Zaid22 at Facebook. 
Com. This is a fake user. And then let's put the password as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't really matter. And the security in this website doesn't really matter either. You can see that it's loading in HTTPS. Everything is perfect. The problem is the keylogger is registering every keystroke entered on the keyboard, regardless of what type of security is used on the application that the user is using. So whether they're typing messages through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through Viber, if they're using their keyboard, this keylogger will register everything that they type. So let's go back to our machine and let's go to the inbox. And again, you can see we got two new emails. If we look in the first one, this one is empty. This is probably while I was just showing you stuff. And if we go to the most recent one, you'll see we have all the key strikes. So you can see that I typed ZID because I made a mistake. You can see that I write backspace to delete all of that. And then I put my username as ZZ22. I use the shift to type the add. And I actually messed this up because the layout of my Windows machine is different. So I typed the shift multiple times. Finally, I got it and it was at facebook.com. And then I hit tab and then I put the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's perfect. And the keylogger will continue doing this and sending me a report every 60 seconds. Again, this all depends on the interval that you pick. Now, another really cool feature for this keylogger is that it's persistent. So if I close everything now and restart my computer, you'll see that the keylogger will start again with the system startup and it'll continue sending me reports every 60 seconds. So I'm just gonna log in. And let's go ahead and open Firefox. And for this time, let's go to twitter.com. And keep in mind, I only type TW now. And let's log in, put a username. We're gonna call it Twitter username and put a password as one, two, three, four, five, six again. And let's go and see if we're gonna get a report. I'm gonna look at the most recent report. And as you can see, I type TW, enter, put the username as Twitter username, and then put the password as 123456. So as you can see right now, once this is executed on a target computer, it'll allow you to spy on every key strike they enter on their keyboard, even if they restart or shut down their computer. Now, if you want to completely remove the keylogger from the target computer, then check out the link for the installation steps in the description. It also includes how to properly remove the keylogger from the target computer.